Let's talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Because I was going to ask you, actually, you know, I, I saw some bits about like, um, oh, I can't exactly remember what I was looking at before, but um, I saw some things about how like uh, potentially you could give each people something uh, around the lake that would then generate some way. I can't remember exactly what you're saying, um, but I wanted to ask you exactly about that. Like, because it sounds a little bit different to uh, Bitcoin Beach. So it sounds like something that's sort of a little bit alternative. It'd be awesome to hear about like, the differences there and like the kind of vision you've got. I'd be uh, really interesting. Yeah, great. So the, you know, the overall vision is, you know, the kind of the pillars of what we're doing there is we educate. So we're working in the school, we're teaching the kids about Bitcoin. Um, you know, we, we've brought down seed signers and they've started assembling the seed signers. We have a full node running down there. We even have a miner plugged in. We actually gave a miner to an S9 miner to the municipality and um, first municipality in Central and South America that, that we're aware of. And actually in the Americas, because about two weeks before my last visit, uh, Fort Worth announced that they were um, they plugged in some miners at, at City Hall, and you know we beat uh, Fort Worth, and they were the first city in America, so uh, we beat them for by about eight weeks. Um, so we're doing that, yeah. Uh, so education, bringing technology, and the one thing that we're committed to is introducing sustainable Bitcoin mining. So the original plan was to use legacy green technology like solar and kind of follow the, the ARK investment and a square research paper of using solar and Bitcoin mining with batteries to create a, a reliable energy grid. But um, one of our co-founders on the team suggested that we look into bio mining, Ricardo out of uh, uh, Cremona out of uh, Mexico. So uh, at this point, we are looking to take uh, basically decomposing organic waste around the lake, feed it into a device, extract the energy from it and mine Bitcoin. And what we're, what we're doing with that is the, the Lake Atitlan is a beautiful lake. It's one of the top 10 most beautiful lakes in the world, but it's, it's uh, being polluted and it's slowly dying because you've got all these unsustainable uh, farming practices that go on around it. And uh, for instance, in Panachel, the, the solid waste facility sits about 800 feet above the, uh, above the town, and they've just got open pits of decomposing organic waste. And it just, when it rains, it just flows down into the river. And the wastewater treatment facility has a giant biodigester that's got uh, leaking methane. So our, our goal is to basically uh, take all those um, sources of stranded and wasted energy, capture it so we can mine Bitcoin. And in doing that, we can finally uh, provide economic incentive and alignment so that everybody around the lake wants to clean the lake. Right now, there's no incentive to get rid of your waste in a sustainable way. You know, um, there's no there's no financial incentive to uh, fix the wastewater treatment facility because you're going to use that resource to fix something when you could use the resource somewhere else. And so uh hopefully uh the first week of july we've got um, some exciting news and uh with related to that and we're super excited about that and the thing that i'm super passionate about also is because of the history of the spaniards in central and south america coming in basically you know pillaging the land taking the gold and and um, taking it from the people you know we all think about Bitcoin is digital gold. And what we want to do is make sure that that digital gold stays in Guatemala. So we want to provide a universal basic income from this waste, uh, waste to energy project. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that they're going to get 100% of the profits, but we want to be able to um, take some portion of the profits that we're getting from the mining and basically distribute it into wallets so that everybody in the community is benefiting and can save for the future. So we're super excited about that for sure. How big is this mining operation that you're bio mining? Well, we don't know yet. So we're, we're doing a proof of concept and I, I don't have the figures in front of me, but um, I think 250 kilowatts is what we're looking at starting with and as a, as a demonstration project. And then we've got um, some strategic partnerships with some other biogas companies in Guatemala that don't know anything about Bitcoin mining. And so we're going to be able to partner with them and um, things are looking really, really uh, bright for, for this opportunity in, in Guatemala. 
Yeah, it certainly sounds um sounds awesome, man. Like the uh yeah, the ability to have an area get cleaned up voluntarily by people because they're incentivized and then to have them gain some sort of funds, uh, as you say, in like a UBI kind of directive way so that, yeah, it sounds, uh, sounds like a great plan to be honest. I mean, obviously as long as it works, then it's (laughs) can't, you can't really go too wrong, I guess. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, we'll get this. So we, at our, on one of our meetings, we were, uh, we were trying to find a landowner um, that, that would host or allow us to lease his land for this project. And we found somebody, and we're talking to him and we're telling him that, that this plan about biodigesters and turning organic waste into energy. And, you know, we, we, we told him that like within the first five or 10 minutes of the conversation and he's agreeable. He wants to help because he's really concerned member of the, of the um, community. And then about an hour into the conversation, he tells us that, Oh, I've installed three biodigesters and we, and you know, our eyes got like this big and we're like, okay. And he said, well, they're not being used. And so we, uh, we, we, literally stopped the meeting and said, go show us these bio digesters. And sure enough, we go up the mountain and there's these giant thousand plus thousands of liter bio digesters that are sitting there. They've never been used because they were installed when he left his position after installing them. The guy who took over for him didn't know what to do, didn't have any motivation to do anything with it. So We've got this three hundred thousand dollar resource just sitting there, not being used, and so we're going to be able to use that off the out of the out of the gate to start mining, and all a hundred percent of that energy and money will go into that community because that's that's their that's their resource. How many miners would those three biodigesters power? We have not that we have not figured out yet, but it would be a lot. Um, it would be uh, it would be meaningful. It would definitely be meaningful for every, and there, I think there are about 1,300 to 2,000 people in that community. So it would be a significantly meaningful amount of Bitcoin that would change their lives. Have you guys uh, contacted like any of these ASIC manufacturers to see if they might donate or like um, give you like older machines or anything like that to kind of bootstrap the project? We, we, we did. Um, for some, you know, we're not an organized nonprofit, and so when it came down to compliance, there was a there was some some friction there. You know, we don't want to give you, you know, Patrick Melder those miners, and um, because we can't fill out the pro- appropriate uh, mining documents. So I I have not set up a an official uh, nonprofit. Um, I just uh, I didn't know where this was going to go, and I just we've not done that. And but I think at this point we're in the we're in the phase of of opportunity where that's going to be less of an issue. We're going to, we're going to be able to get the miners that we need without a problem. No, it makes a lot of sense. And I think people will be willing to help, especially when it comes to like, yeah, different mining companies potentially donating older machines or uh, it sounds, I mean, fantastic. Like you could really have something going, you know, where you've got like you're using this, this, this equipment that, as you said, has just been there not being used. Um, and then you can, it's just, yeah, it's astonishing, really. It's kind of like, uh, yeah. there's elements of little bits of good luck there, which is great. And if it, it just feels like it's kind of a you know, destiny, right? Like this should, should happen. Um, Lawrence, remember I'm a Christian, so we use different <laughs> words. <laughs> blessing. <laughs> yeah. Definite blessing. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. 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 But either way, like, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So I, yeah, and it'd be cool to, cause obviously if this is then a success, it could potentially inspire other areas right they can see bitcoin beach and say this was like a kind of more tourist base but organic still and other things and then obviously the bitcoin lake could be again a bit of tourism but also like hey using natural wastes well not natural but waste that was naturally there because people kept dumping etc mm-hmm. it could be like a, another case study i guess to persuade uh, local areas and and different sort of teams to actually do something with uh with Bitcoin. So it's really exciting stuff as far as I'm concerned, man. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, the way we look at it is it's a, we are moving into a complete decentralization of Bitcoin mining and uh, waste management. So, you know, everything has been centralized, uh, including energy generation and waste management. And with this technology and with these incentives, we can bring opportunity like this down to the, to a local community, you know, 
um, we could work with home builders or developers that want to implement a solution like this rather than tying into the grid or to a, a sewage facility. They, they could start mining Bitcoin uh, in a development because um, they'll have enough homes and waste to generate their own energy. In fact, one of the one of the, the technologies that we're looking at, we've we've secured the rights to a technology once we um, once the plan is in operation. Um, I think it's within about 12 hours. It's, it's self-sustaining. You don't need any power from the grid at all. So it'll, once we get it going, it's running on its own from its own energy that it creates from this waste. Have you um, come across the work of Michael Schmid? We just interviewed him. He's mm -hmm. a guy that's working on using ASICs to like heat water heaters. So your water heater basically mines every time you take a shower uh, kind of thing. Um, it sounds like with this bio digestion mining that you guys are doing, and then like the applications of using the excess heat from the miners for other applications, like this could really, uh, you know, like they would integrate really well together. Yeah, yeah. The the I actually have a Bitcoin miner uh, S nine here in my home, and in the winter I hooked it up to my HVAC system and heated my basement. So I'm very familiar with using that excess heat, and um, there's. You know, excess heat in Guatemala, certainly um, at altitude, because the lake is about 5,000 feet, and then in the mountains around it, it gets up to about 8,000 feet. So the definitely the nights are chilly, and you could dir certainly divert some of that that heat from the miners for, for heating in homes and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, we were talking to Michael um, about like ways you can actually use it to even like do air conditioning and stuff like that. And obviously that's a lot wow. more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think we really settled on like, he wasn't entirely certain, but we were pretty, we were pretty confident that there's, there's got to be some kind of way from seeing like other people having done similar kind of applications. So yeah, it could be, it could be interesting to see if that would be possible. I mean, imagine you've got like, yeah, you've got the waste, which is then throwing the Bitcoin, which is then using for the air conditioning, which is then, and it's almost like you're creating this like yeah. full on circular, well, circular economy, but, but also like, you know, it's kind of like recycling. Yeah. It's the, the possibilities are pretty endless to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's pretty exciting stuff. I mean, I'd, I'd love to come and visit, uh, obviously, you know, being practical, you know I've not, maybe this year but um it'd be cool to come visit though and see like how things go um yeah i'd love to have you yeah for sure uh, and support and i think anyone else out there listening as well like uh as, as you said if, if someone wants to go they can get in touch with you and yeah and you said it was a uh, say it's bitcoin lake dot um what was the website uh bitcoin lake dot io dot io and then uh the twitter handle which i had open earlier and i closed is bitcoin lake bitcoin no it's it's lake bitcoin on twitter Gotcha. So, so look at our name, Lago Bitcoin. Lago is Lake in Spanish, so it's Lake Bitcoin on Twitter. Gotcha. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, Lake Patrick, Bitcoin. I had a quick question. Um, I, in El Salvador, they have this like phenomenon of volcanoes and, and geothermal uh, energy for mining, which is like a huge project that they're going to do Bitcoin City with. I know that Guatemala also has a lot of volcanic activity mm -hmm. and probably geothermal energy. Have yeah. you guys like? looked at that as like a source of energy for mining? No, because the, those are, that's big money. That's big CapEx, you know? So uh, Guatemala has, air, especially on the lake, we have every source of renewable energy available, hydro, wind, solar, geothermal, um, and now, you know, uh, bio mining and all that. So we, we, like I said, we started with solar, but then since we're bootstrapping everything on our own, solar is expensive, you know? And so when we started going down the, the energy cycle and we came across bio mining, that just made perfect sense for us. So we can get going pretty quickly uh, without a lot of capital. And that's that's why. But yeah, I mean, the, the mountains around the lake are, in fact, inactive volcanoes. So th this is there are active geothermal hot springs around the lake as well. Yeah, there's, uh, there's certainly a lot of possibilities on the globe, isn't there? Um, I can tell. It's like when I was watching, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but there was an episode of uh, Jordan Peterson's podcast with uh, Safe Dean on it. Uh, and like seeing Michael, Michael, um, seeing Jordan Peterson, I was going to say Michael Jordan. It would love to, it'd love to see Michael Jordan get into Bitcoin, but that's not the case uh, as far as I'm aware. But seeing Jordan Peterson get like super pumped about like when he realized about like the kind of, oh, the possibilities of Bitcoin mining. And he's like, what? And then he get, they get the conversation goes in this yeah. other direction. It's like, uh, it's kind of like how I feel right now, realizing the kind of different natural 
things there are and like waste and the volcanoes and there's so many different ways um that you can literally just be generating free money whilst also clearing things up that's um, right um and then supporting the local community which is um yeah. amazing quite frankly yeah. as far as i'm concerned yeah. so it gets me excited and anyone out there listening it should be getting you excited too that's awesome <laughs> that's for sure um but i don't know yeah, ricardo is there any more questions you had because I, I think i've just we've bombarded you i don't think there's anything else i can even think of to ask i know about the food i was oh do they have pupusas or is that like an el salvador thing uh yes uh, actually my first pupusa was actually in guatemala so um there are several uh salvadorans that ha have shops there in pan Hichel, and in fact that's where i had it so uh, owned by salvadoran yeah Nice. Okay. Cause I, I mean, I, I had a pupusa in El Salvador, but like I wanted to get an actual one made by like, you know, a mum or whatever, but I, I think I only had one at like the, at the adopting Bitcoin conference, which obviously is like mass produced pupusa. I was like, damn. You didn't hit up the street vendors lines? No, dude, I really wanted to, but like, I think we had like the schedule and everything was, you know, I never ended up actually managing to do it, but the breakfasts well, I had were amazing when I was in El Salvador. I loved them. Or you can just make your own. I like to cook, so I make my own pupusas. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Well, I might, I might be able to do it here. I guess it, I'm sure it's like maybe a little bit different on the quality of the corn flour or whatever yeah, that's used. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, well, it well, it's like all cooking though. I mean, the secret ingredients love. So when you got the mama on the side of the street making the pupusas, there's a lot of love in that. <laughs> Damn right. Love and pounds yeah. of butter. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> the yeah. two secrets. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, love it. Well, um, yeah, I don't know, Ricardo, do you have anything else or are you good? Yeah, no, I think I'm good. Uh, Patrick, I wanted to say thank you for coming on and accepting the interview. Like this was super fascinating for me to hear about your efforts uh, with the Bitcoin Lake that you're the project and then also the bio mining. Like I didn't even know that was a possibility. That's super interesting. So um, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And if people want to learn kind of the, the school full scope of things from beginning to end, I started kind of putting the plan together in September of last year and it's all on medium. So my my, if you just search Bitcoin Lake on Medium or my uh, Medium handle, which is 67 Corvette, uh, you can see, you know, the progression of thought. And after every major trip, I kind of codify what I've learned. So we have kind of a, a living historical document of what's going on. And for our Christian Bitcoiners out here, where can they get your books? Amazon. You can just type in my name on Amazon and, and get them on Amazon. I'm going to I'm going to check that out, actually, myself and see if I can pick up the um the, the more recent one that you said that was like kind of more relevant because it'd be interesting to see the perspective <clears throat> um but yeah i do this is uh thank you so much uh, my pleasure thanks guys yeah. yeah this has been super interesting for me and like kind of you know give me a bit of like a passion on a friday evening in the here in the uk so it's pretty cool that's awesome thanks guys appreciate it so much Oh, thanks. Well, I say thanks for coming on. Um, I say everyone out there listening, uh, head over to Lake Bitcoin on, on, on Twitter and you can check everything out. You've got the links to uh, a Shopify. You've got an email. Um, you've got BitcoinLake.io, the website. So you can find out pretty much everything you want to from there. Give it a follow. You can send sats. You can yep. send sats. Yeah. Uh, you can send love, whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for, for, for coming on, Patrick, for sure. And um, for everyone out there listening, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you had a good time. I uh, hope you have an awesome day, week, month, year. Keep loving life. Keep being great. And of course, keep buying Bitcoin. See you later.